folks. Today I'm on the South Fork Shenandoah with Mark Frondor. Hey there. We're gonna hopefully catch some smallmouth and some largemouth. I'm Mark Frondor, Shenandoah River Keeper, and my job is to protect this river. Um, in 2004, we had a fish kill out here that killed 80% of the smallmouth bass and sunfish in this river. Um, since that time, the river has rebounded somewhat, but we are out here protecting the river, holding polluters accountable, and doing everything possible to make it to be the uh, best resource it can be. And to also encourage people to get out here um, and enjoy the river and enjoy the, the beauty with their friends and family. What you can do is you can download the Water Reporter app. It's an app that you can put on your smartphone. Um, when you're out here and enjoying the, 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 the river, if you see something that's wrong, you see something that's off, you see a heavy algal bloom going on in the river, you can just pick up your phone, snap a photo of it, and send it off, hit send, and it geolocates um, the exact location of where the photograph was taken so we can come out and, and take a look at it and um, report it to the proper authorities. Um, we desperately need eyes and ears on the river and the water reporter is a wonderful way to make that happen. And so we encourage everybody to, to, um, to download it and to use it. So we've zoomed up um, a little distance from the, the put-in and uh, clearly this time of year we got, we got snow on the ground. Uh, we're gonna have some cold water but we're gonna show you something that gives you a little bit of an unfair advantage this time of year. Uh, specifically we're we're in an area that has a lot of spring influence and we got a creek that's uh, trickling in up here. Mark, there, the areas that have the spring influence, what do you, I mean there's a lot here in the Shenandoah Valley, um, you know, is, is there something that, that helps people find spring influence creeks? Like something you can look for? Yeah, where, you know, I tell folks is that if you're out um, in the dead of winter and it's cold, and you see a lot of snow and ice um, to be looking at the streams or even looking at the rivers that you're at and if you see um, ice or snow and then you see um, you know flowing water that tells you that there there's an, an influx of water coming in from a spring or or from a from a brook and to pay attention to that and especially you know it's good year round because it's good in the in the winter because the water's a little bit warmer could be holding bait fish and, and other uh, food but even in the summer it's good because you can go back to there and where you have warm water temperatures especially for smallmouth bass and largemouth and things like that and you, you go back and you revisit that cool water yeah um, in the summer. and I know here in the in middle Appalachia you know we have some of our northern species like the walleye and the muskie that like that in the summer yep they like that cooler water coming out of the ground um, keeps them keeps them happy and healthy in July and August. Exactly. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna head up here and uh, hopefully catch a couple bass. Smallmouth. We got smallmouth and largemouth. Smallmouth, largemouth. There's some walleye and there's maybe some muskie in here too. Cool. So looking forward to it. Let's get them. So we got 41.2 out here in the main part of the river, and we're gonna scoot up into that that creek, which. I know from fishing here years past is uh, it's got a lot of that spring influence. Let's zoom up in there and uh, see see what temperature difference we have. It is uh, super clear water. I'm also moving in here pretty quick to look and see what scatters. Um, it's a tactic I use in, in summer quite a bit. I call it, instead of crash and burn, it's crash and learn. And uh, all I'm doing is, is seeing who scatters out of the way, but seeing any fish, fish movement. I did see some coming up on that bank earlier, but uh, yeah, nothing yet. Yeah, we'll we'll check the uh, the water temperature here in a minute. Once once the um, once the transducer gets used to this this water temperature, it's not always a huge boost. It's not always a a really um, 
significant amount in in one particular area sometimes it is sometimes you find that spring that's just gushing you know warmer water into one spot and, and if it coincides with a deep spot yeah you're gonna you're gonna catch some fish there goes one I think it's a largey it's definitely a bass um, and sometimes it's just you know in an area in general there's you know there's warmer water temperature in that part of the valley because of the cumulative effect of a whole lot of springs so you can see I've moved this you know little distance up into the creek and the further I get up here the warmer the water is uh, right now it's saying 43.8 I've seen 44.2 um, you know and, and that's just sort of evidence of this whole area being you know having the springs out there and sometimes you can actually you know see a little bit of water trickling in from the hillside or you see a little bit different colored like kind of that teal green colored water uh, but more than anything you see that water temperature rise and that's why it's important especially you know if you're if you're looking for that spring influenced water always have a graph going and, and keep an eye on that um, on that temperature graph and uh, it'll it'll tell you quite a bit First fish, we got a smallmouth here. We kind of left the creek behind. Nothing going on up in there, but we still have 41.2 degree water up here. And uh, nice South Fork Shenandoah smallmouth there. So you got hit a uh, finesse jig just just letting it sit there on this bedrock flat so mark and I were discussing you've been out here with with the fisheries biologist when they've done shocking right. and, and he started explaining how they do it and I'm like wait I gotta I gotta record this so they, they take three John boats um, and they're all outfitted with with the uh, batteries and uh, you go down to the end of the pool and you start on one side of the river, say, you know, you know, river left, and then you motor all the way up and until you hit the next sort of natural impediment. And then you stop and you turn around and you come back down and now you're in the center. And you go all the way to the end of the pool. Right. And then you turn around and then you come up the other side and do it a third for a third pass so you're essentially going over all of the water granite fish can move from the center to the right when you're you're going back over but you're trying to do that and um, and the purpose is they want to go year to year in the same stretch of water roughly at the same time with the same conditions to get an assessment of how many fish do they actually collect the average size the length um, of all of those and when it comes to muskie Virginia uh, DWR, they'll put a, um, they'll, they'll put both a, a regular tag that an angler can see, and they ask that it's returned. But then they also put in um, RFIDs, radio frequency IDs, oh, cool. in, into their belly, and um, and then when you come out the next time, you're scanning the fish with the with the reader, and then that way you can see if this fish has been caught before. And then when you get back to the lab, you can say, oh, it weighed um, so many kilograms two years ago, and that weighs, you know, 20% more. Nice. Um, and so they're able to track individual um, fish by the insertion of the RFIDs. That has to be such a cool thing to, to be out here and see and, oh, and understand. It, it really is. As an angler, you know, we, you know, we... <laughs> We think we know it's there, but to run current in there and right, see things exactly, pop up yeah. in places that you may not guess. Yep. And and when you do it, you, you have a small window where they've been stunned in the current. And so you have these long 20-foot nets that you need to get down into the water and, and pull these things up. So you really have to be quick. The first time that it happened, I, I was just a, you know, a total noob. And I'm just like looking at it enthralled. And it's just like, grab them, grab them. <laughs> And, you know, I was just like, oh, my God, Stone Cold Jerry Rookie. 
Right. And um, but yeah, but it's pretty pretty impressive to to see. Um, and then you can you start to see where these fish are hanging, and um, it, it, it's just really interesting. It sort of just opens up the the river um, to you to see what actually is going on down below. That's a good smallmouth. Yeah, it's a good one. He's got these little black freckles on the belly. Yeah. They get that in winter. I know up on the Susquehanna we see them with the black splotches. Any idea what that's? Melanin. And it comes and goes, it's not perfect. Melanin. Alright. Winter melanin. He's sixteen and a half. A nice 16 and a half incher here. We'll let him get back in the water. Thank you for eating my hand tied finesse jig. Good fishing. Um, yeah, so we've been out here on the uh, south fork of the Shenandoah fishing first week in January, and um, you know, water temperatures on the cool side, low 40s very clear conditions but what we're seeing is that we're pulling up an awful lot of algae filamentous algae um, you should expect to see it in the middle of summer um, late summer but you really should not be seeing um, large clumps of algae in the river in the dead of winter why why are we seeing it what's well what we're encountering on the shenandoah watershed is we have a tremendous amount of nitrogen and phosphorus in the river um, a lot of this comes from uh, agricultural operations um, and runoff uh, from the, you know, the slopes in the valley, the fields and things like that. Um, the Shenandoah Valley is tremendously productive from an agricultural standpoint. Um, but in the last few years, we've just seen a dramatic increase in the amount of poultry on the river. And so we have about 180 million chickens being raised every year in the Shenandoah Valley. 580,000 head of cattle and that cattle manure and poultry litter it has to go someplace and so when they put it on the fields um, and there's an agronomic need for it it's great it's a very inexpensive uh, fertilizer for nitrogen and phosphorus um, but once the uh, land becomes saturated especially with respect to phosphorus it can't hold on to that um, it, uh, it hold on to that uh, the phosphorus right and, and then a up. heavy rain comes and it gets washed off and it gets right into the river and it becomes just fast food for, for algae. And, um, and they, they will readily gobble it up. So the normal, you know, with, with the normal amount of, of, you know, nitrogen and phosphorus in, in a river that you normally see, you do not see this in January. No, you would not see it in January. It would it essentially disappear. Okay, so, I mean, it, it's annoying for us fishing um, it, that it gets on our fishing lures. Like what, what, um, so what? So we have algae, so what? Yeah, so, well, it's a combination of things. I mean, just algae for, for an angler, yeah, it can be a little annoying. Life goes on, you just move. Um, but it's not just annoyance to an angler um, and recreational fishermen. Just this past summer, over on the North Fork, we had a 52 and a half mile harmful algal bloom advisory put in place by Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources and Virginia Department of Health. Um, it started out, uh, we submitted reports and they came out and checked it out and tested it, found blue-green algae. Blue-green algae um, is actually cyanobacteria. It's not a, it's not a true algae in some respects, um, but it releases toxins. Uh, the toxins, they are uh, dangerous, um, dangerous to livestock dangerous to pets and possibly even to humans 
Um, you know, if you have, you know, kids out here swimming and they happen to come across um, some blue-green algae and they inadvertently get a gulp full of water, they could very easily get some gastrointestinal illness going on. Um, it's blue-green algae a few years back up on Lake Erie that closed the water intakes in Toledo wow. um, because of blue-green algae and it was uh, exceeding the safe thresholds. All right, Mark, appreciate the time on the water with you. That was a great time. Enjoyed it. Winter fishing, a little on the slow side, but yeah. that's the way it is sometimes. We got two fish, but they were healthy, which makes me happy here yeah, exactly. on the Shenandoah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, had to work for them. It's good. Good.